everybody, it's Drake here. Now this is still hard for me to believe, but I just passed the million subscriber mark here on YouTube. And to top it off, YouTube sent me this awesome new plaque in the mail. Ooh, shiny. Quite a step up from the silver play button they sent me a few years back. No, don't get me wrong, this solid gold plaque is pretty amazing. But I feel like something a bit more uh, extreme would better suit this channel. In celebration of this milestone, I'm going to build a few dangerously awesome iterations of the play button as well as take a look back on how this channel came to be since I started it in 2006. So yeah, I hope you enjoy this video. Before I got into lasers and electricity, I was obsessed with pyrotechnics. I spent all my free time making fireworks and spent like every dime I earned in more chemicals. Now at the time I was just a kid and my poor parents were probably terrified, but this all ended up being a really good learning experience for me. Now after some time I became proficient at making aerial fireworks based on published formulas, so I started experimenting with my own recipes. That brings me to this little piece of paper right here, which is actually the origin of this channel. So what is it? It's a recipe for a mix that burns pink that I use as a star composition in aerial fireworks, and I came up with it when I was 13. Now it's high in zinc, which is solely due to the fact that I could buy zinc really cheaply on eBay. <laughs> Some things never change, right? Now the thing is I was proud of this mix, and I wanted to share it with the APC form, which is a pyrotechnics form that taught me so much during that time period. So I registered on YouTube with my forum username, and then posted my first video, an 11 second clip of this mix in action all the way back in 2006. It's been over a decade since I last made this mix, so I felt like mixing up a batch in order to make a play button that goes back to my early days on YouTube. Eh, I guess that'll do. Let's light it on fire. Hmm, this stuff's a lot harder to light than I remember. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. Okay, that was pretty fun. I was curious what kind of fuel and oxygen balance I had in this mix, so I did some stoichiometry on it. Now, these reactions aren't perfect, because there's going to be some side reactions going on, but still should give a pretty good idea of what's the uh, limiting reagent here. Well, it turns out this stuff is way under-oxidized. I really needed, like, double the amount of oxidizer to burn up all that fuel. And also, this stuff is really heavy. It takes a lot of lift charge to put this stuff in the air. So as far as pink burning star mixes go, this one is complete garbage. But as for my channel, the rest is history. Now, this channel is mainly known for my laser experiments. And in fact, I had been tinkering with lasers for a couple years before starting my channel. Now, that being said, almost every laser project in my first couple years was a total failure. Now, I did have some success in modifying some green laser pointers to make them brighter. But it did not take long until my desire for more power ended up destroying them. Right here I have my oldest DIY laser that still works, and I built it in 2007. Now back then everyone was tearing apart DVD burners for the burning laser diode inside, but every time I took apart a DVD burner, I just broke it. But luckily a, a member of a laser form I was on found a source for those laser diodes that were brand new so I didn't have to extract them. So I bought a few of them and, and I still did kill some of them, but I was able to successfully build this thing. It can light matches and cut black plastic, but it's nowhere near the multi-watt monstrosities we have nowadays. Looking back, I can't believe I didn't just give up on the hobby considering how many times I failed and how difficult I found electronic circuits to be. I guess I just couldn't help but be amazed by the laser beams. It's crazy how far laser tech has come in recent years, as nowadays we can get multi-watt green and blue laser diodes for a surprisingly cheap cost. Back when I started, green laser diodes didn't even exist yet, and blue laser diodes were still being developed. Now I can get over 5 watts of blue in a handheld unit which is just downright ridiculous. I've built a lot of scary portable lasers over the years to debut on this channel, but you know what? These things almost never get used outside of my videos, just because they're so powerful. No, don't get me wrong, I love huge lasers, but mainly when I can bolt them to a table. For handhelds, I actually prefer my lower powered lasers, just because I don't have to wear goggles when using them. Here's a cool camera trick with a weak laser. If you set the exposure long enough, you can spell words or even draw simple pictures with nothing but a laser pointer. Now it may be hard to see what I'm drawing, but once I look at the shot it's pretty clear. The thing is, you can do the same trick with your own eyeballs if you draw with the laser fast enough due to something called persistence of vision. Now it's basically impossible to do this fast enough by hand, but with some mirrors on a set of fast moving galvanometers, you can draw some incredible graphics. Now I didn't build this device, it's actually a commercial unit called the Laser Cube and it's made by Wicked Lasers. Now it's actually really remarkable that they were able to jam so much stuff in this tiny housing. Persistence of vision isn't the only way to draw with a laser. Here I have one of my favorite toys from my childhood. It's a glow-in-the-dark surface that had a little incandescent bulb inside to charge the phosphor. Now the stock light was garbage, but with a violet laser pointer the effect is pretty amazing. Speaking of glow-in-the-dark lasers, check out this black light laser pointer that I built recently. 
it's likely the only UV laser pointer in the entire world. Now I actually built one of these a couple years ago, but it didn't take long for it to burn up. I think the laser diode was damaged before I received it. Now new these laser diodes cost several thousands of dollars, but I was able to find a part on eBay that contained one of these laser diodes for just 150 bucks. Now the color is actually really interesting. When it's on a non-fluorescent surface, it's like a bluish gray color, but once you hit something fluorescent, it glows really brightly. Now of course another method of drawing with a laser is using the brute force method. Here I have my modified eBay laser from a few videos ago, and has an output power of over 5 watts. Now this piece of wood absorbs the light very strongly, so it makes it really easy to engrave. In fact, it's actually pretty hard to prevent a jet of fire from shooting out of the wood while I'm engraving it. Operating all these giant lasers requires special attention to safety, and I always wear laser goggles when working with my big lasers. Now over the years I've gotten my share of skin burns from being hit by laser beams, but honestly this isn't even that big of a deal, because skin burns heal but retinal burns don't. Now for those of my viewers out there who are interested in the laser hobby, my advice is to start small and read lots. Now lasers can be a very fulfilling and educational hobby. All it takes is one mistake and you're blind forever. On the topic of safety, I want to talk about this device right here. Now, I'm sure a lot of my viewers have seen one of these because it's the high voltage transformer from a microwave oven. So why do I want to talk about this part specifically? Well that's because out of all the parts that are commonly scavenged from science hobbies, it's these that kill more than anything else. Now don't believe me? Look it up on Google. You'll find a ton of stories of both kids and adults seeing experiments online and trying to replicate them using these things, and then dying in the process. The voltage and current these things can deliver is well beyond what it takes to kill you, and all it takes is one mistake to kill you instantly. I know this sounds hypocritical of me to tell you not to mess with these things, since I use them all the time, sometimes even chaining as many as four of them together. But the fact of the matter is that I waited till I had over 10 years of electronics experience before I ever experimented with high voltage. If you want to dive down that rabbit hole, you better have a solid understanding of electrical circuits because just blindly following an online tutorial is a great way to end up dead. Now if you're new to electronics but just can't resist the urge to experiment with high voltage, look into Slayer exciters. Not only are they relatively safe, they're a lot of fun and can actually be really educational. Alright, now that I got that out of the way, check out the upgrades I made to my SparkApp Tesla coil. Now I originally built this thing for my overclocked plasma globe project but I had some issues that prevented it from operating at its full potential. So over the past few months I've made some upgrades and modifications to fix some of these issues, and it's dramatically increased the output. I started by adding this big turret on top, which I just made from some aluminum ducting. Now this thing actually has two functions. Uh, for one, it increases the uh, capacitance on the secondary side, but it also helps prevent arcs from jumping back and striking itself, because that's a really good way to destroy secondary coils. Now I also adjusted the uh, coupling here between these two coils, but unfortunately I destroyed a couple of my secondaries while doing that. Now the biggest problem to tackle was this rotary spark gap. Now I'm still using an angle grinder, but the original design kept burning up electrodes and just was not firing consistently. So I started by having this uh, custom machine bake light disc made for me that holds these uh, little flying electrodes really precisely, because my original hand drilled one just wasn't cutting it. Now I also replaced these uh, static electrodes here with tungs and rods. Now these things last much, much longer, and I'm getting way better results with this uh, rotary spark app. I rewired the main supply here to run on a 240 volt split phase outlet. Now the main supply actually didn't change. It's still just uh, four microwave oven transformers chained together in series. But I did add a lot more ballast caps. In fact, I think there's 20 microwave oven capacitors there. Now this functions as a uh, power limiter. So in theory, this power supply shouldn't draw more than five kilowatts. Now I did actually make some more mods to this thing, but I don't want to bore you guys with details. Let's make some sparks. Wow. It's crazy how the Faraday cage that I'm using is actually too small to allow the coil to reach its maximum spark length. I guess that's a pretty good problem to have though. Is it bad that I already want to build a much bigger Tesla coil? But first I'm going to need a bigger shop. Now it's crazy, it hasn't even been 6 months since I moved into this place, and I'm already looking to upgrade. Now don't get me wrong, this shop's great. It's just that for some of the stuff I have in mind, I'm going to need a dedicated building with a huge power hookup, and a lot of electromagnetic shielding. And also if I hire a crew, I can be a lot more consistent with my upload schedule, because video production can be quite a time sink for me. Back when I started posting on YouTube, monetization wasn't a thing and nobody was getting paid to make videos. Then YouTube gave us the ability to put ads in our videos and it was a huge game changer. It gave us a way to fund our projects and video production costs, and for some even make a living. Now it wasn't long before the big content creators started doing paid sponsorships. 
Now, personally, this idea didn't sit well with me as I thought it would hinder my creative freedom, but man was I wrong. I started accepting my first sponsorships this year. That's after 12 years of posting videos to YouTube. Now, I find it hilarious that companies out there are willing to support the insanity that is my channel. Now, every company I've worked with has been great to deal with, and the additional funding has allowed me to upgrade my tools and my workshop. It's even allowed me to fund some of my own research projects that I wouldn't have been able to afford otherwise. It really is an awesome thing. I get to do mad science, companies get to showcase their products, and unlike working for a TV network, I get to choose which products are worthy of being shown here. Speaking of which, I want to give a big thank you to Audible for sponsoring this video. Listening makes us smarter, more connected people. It makes us better partners, scientists, and leaders. And there's no better place to start listening than Audible. On Audible, you'll find an unmatched selection of audiobooks, uh, original audio shows, a comedy news, and much more. Audible members now get more than ever before. Members choose three titles every month, one audiobook and two Audible originals that you can't hear anywhere else. Audible members can also get free access to the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post, all delivered daily to the Audible app. Using the convenient app, members can access Audible at any time and from any device. While working out, while soldering, or even while tuning a Tesla coil, it will always pick up right where they left off. A listen that I'll always recommend is The Last Question by Isaac Asimov. This classic explores a struggle against thermodynamics and the ultimate fate of the universe, all while asking the question, what will become of the human race? Start listening with a 30-day Audible trial, and your first audiobook and two Audible originals are free. Visit audible.com slash styropyro or text styropyro to 500-500. Again, that's audible.com slash styropyro or text S-T-Y-R-O-P-Y-R-O -O to 500-500. So yeah, thank you again to Audible for sponsoring this video. Well, that's about all I have for you guys today. But until the next time, stay safe and happy lazing.